Ready to go? Yeah. And rolling. The CD is called The Company I Keep. It comes at a time, a very emotional time for me. My husband and partner of 35 years, Richard Dubb, also passed away this year. And in that period, um, I found that two things got me through. And one of them was music, which always has gotten me through. And the other thing was my friends. I've got wonderful friends. So I thought, wouldn't it be nice to use this concept in the new record? Surround myself with people that I really like and do music that I really dig. 22 people, 22 musicians are on this record. We came up with the material first, and 50% of it is my Mark Winkler originals. Days may be dry, the sky may be sunny. That's, I like that. That's still there, but in the new, in the less busy, I just went. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, I was just asked by Mark to be a part of his new record, and alongside Sarah Gazarek, a vocalist who I've been working with for about 13, 14 years or so. Mark and I met through a mutual friend of his, a wonderful pianist named David Benoit, and I sang a couple of their collaborative tunes in a concert that David put on a couple months ago. From that point on, we both just said, I think we should work together. <laughs> Yeah, I met Mark uh, through a friend named Charlotte Crosley. Uh, she was a singer in a group called Full Swing. And she said, you ought to get together with this guy named Mark. I think he'd be a good match. He's a great lyricist and a nice guy and a good singer. So we met and we hit it off right away. And then I met his partner, Richard, and we just became really close. So I'm a pianist, composer, educator. I was Natalie Cole's pianist for the last seven years of her life. Uh, with Mark, it's real natural. Um, he's always been natural to me, so. Yeah, jazz is cool, man. Barbara Brighton, who's my producer, and I came up with a dream list of people that we wanted. It's just mind-blowing. I never cease to be thrilled okay. by the creativity that comes out of these musicians when they're given the freedom to play what's in their heart and soul. Getting a call from Mark for any project, I know it's gonna be something that he spent a great deal of time thinking about and coalescing, getting the right combination of musicians and the right programming and selection of songs. You know, I wrote this song a long, long time ago and uh, I've always loved it. And I, I took it out of the closet, you know, and, and people really seem to love it. So um, it's nice that it's having this new life. Her apartment was smaller than I remember. We just sort of went down the list and we said, wouldn't it be great for Jackie Ryan to sing Walk Between the Raindrops with me because uh, she's got such a beautiful voice. We vowed to never say goodbye when we keep we could hear the sound of thunder. This is the first time I've recorded with Mark. I, I did record a song of his, the lyrics that were written by him, and the music was by John Mayer. And I really wanted to write lyrics to it. And he said, oh, you know, someone already did, Mark Winkler. And so I listened to the lyrics, and I thought, oh my gosh, I can't do any better than that. His, his lyric writing is so good. And it's just really fun working with Mark. He's very positive and all the people he has around him are very positive. Whenever Mark's in the studio, it's, it's great. He always, he always brings his A-game and the, uh, the tunes are always great. He hires great arrangers for the songs. And it's just relaxed and easygoing and it's, it's a lot of fun. But it still ain't so. So hard to say, say what's real. Steve Tyrell, who's been a a wonderful supporter of mine for quite a long time uh, sang the song with me. It was really a thrill. Still and so. I am honored and beyond happy to be singing with this genius friend of mine. Strolling, strolling. I've loved Prince's song Strolling for a long, long time, uh, since it came out in 1986, I think. 
could rent some roller skates. We could skate around the lake. I didn't know this song, and he's wanted to do this for years, he said, when he first heard it. Prince, you know, and I thought, you know, when he told me, I went, Prince? What are we gonna do with a Prince song? And then I played his version, Prince's version. I went, oh, I get it. There's a, a fun element to the to the record. I mean, there's some really fun songs, but then there's some really meaningful songs like the sum, Here's to Life. Two, and then me. You think it's one of these clever, kind of nostalgic, but still a bit edgy, interesting. Love his songs, his lyrics are always fascinating and, uh, and they make me smile. And Mark has very good taste. He, uh, he always tries to get very eclectic musicians together and uh, just like most of his records, they have uh, very hip qualities to them. So I'm always happy to, that he calls me. I'm always writing songs. That's who I am. You know, I'm a songwriter. It's Midnight in Paris. Midnight in Paris is based on my favorite movie of the last five years. Midnight in Paris, directed by Woody Allen. I saw the movie about five times. I'm really proud of this song. I really like the lyric. I think it's a lot of fun. It's about the lost generation, you know, F. Scott Fitzgerald and Zelda Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway and Salvador Dali and... Oh, how... Josephine can dance. So Rich Eames, who's sort of my secret ingredient, he's my arranger for a lot of tunes. When I need to work out a song, I go over to his studio. Six boys back from the end. One of the good things about Mark is he knows what he likes, and uh, he doesn't hesitate to tell you, and you, you get stuff done that way, you know, because he'll let you know right away if you're on the right track or not. Mark, so can we just try the ending? Let's try letter I again, okay? The neat thing about what happened when we recorded it is we created like a movie soundtrack. You know, we have a clarinet going. We have a violinist playing. You know, we have a guitar guy playing like Django Reinhardt. In a lot of these songs that I'm recording today, the guitar is sort of functioning as a horn, sort of filling things and coloring things. Um, especially with Jameson Trotter's arrangements, they're so harmonically rich. Jameson has such a beautiful way of sort of filling out that function that my function is more coloristic. I feel it's not a song, it's a movie, you know? It's like a little three and a half minute movie. Almost time to say goodbye. Well, The Sum was written with a wonderful writer named Bill Cantos, and he wrote it in a style that was not as jazzy as I wanted, but the lyric meant a lot to me because it turns out that it was about Richard and my looking at life in the context of losing Richard, realizing it was just one moment in a tapestry that life, you know, life gives you losses, it gives you wins, and it gives you headaches and colds, but it also gives you wonderful friends and music. We can't ignore the things that made us cry All the grit inside that made us fly so it meant a lot to me and I wanted to do it on the record. The thing that's really wonderful about this project is the relationships that we all have. And we just love Tally Sherwood, who is the engineer. So the three of us will talk about, well, what did you think? Maybe maybe that would be nice. I yeah. can just play a line. You yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, right. Yes. But we realized that it needed to be 20% more jazz. So we did a couple of things, we were trying things, and then finally we got it to Jameson Trotter. Did you like it, Mark? Did you like it, Barbara? Who unlocked the song in a jazz context. Uh, yeah, we've worked together a, a long time. We, we have a, a really nice writing relationship. We immediately liked each other. Immediately. Immediately. Well, because we, we get, we we get, get each, each other. other. Yeah. Jameson Trotter makes the best iced orange drinks I've ever had. He's also an incredibly nice person, and he's like a big bear, you know? And he seems to have gone through a lot in his life where we sort of have some sort of a chemistry. 
together. And that's even before I get into how wonderful I think he is as a songwriter and uh, arranger and piano player. We were looking for a keyboardist to do it. And Barbara said, why don't we use John B. You liked another intro better? I'm not saying that, I'm just saying there's no way he's going to play the song and it's not going to be jazz because that's what he is. They had sent me the music a couple days ahead of time and I, I kind of like penciled on a few chords that I might like to play and they seem to like them. The song is, is sort of an open template and we start kind of dissecting. I mean, you know, a great arrangement is a living, breathing thing, you know. I mean, it might be what's on the paper, but, you know, you start playing it, you know, and you start editing a little bit. Each moment we survive, I think it's 119, uh, smaller. Yeah. So you don't want, you, well, you right want to adjust between, to, with you yeah. and John and Toby? We believe me, it can change. It was a yeah, beautiful yeah, okay. alchemy, gonna... but in the alchemy, there was a push and pull. Jameson had written the arrangement and there was something that he really liked in that arrangement that John didn't. But we managed to work it out, so both of them were very happy. Let's and, try it. Uh, Mark was saying he'd like the bass to come in and the d drums to come I in. I still was singing it like I was Celine Dion. In my heart I do believe. And Barbara wanted me to sing it like I was Mark Murphy. And so I was resisting with every shred of my body. But Barbara was right. I realized that the, the struggle really led to something beautiful. And actually it's my favorite song on the record. No complaints and no regrets. I still believe in chasing dreams. Can you talk about what you're thinking about when you're singing the song? And I have learned that all you um, I'm thinking about Richard. Is all you, you know, so the wonderful thing about that song is everything, but that the person who's singing it is saying, I yes, I've had success, I've had this life, but there's still more that I see ahead. So it sort of points me to the next chapter. And the world spins when you hold my hand. Like a I think the last record was more jivey, groovy. But this one, I think, has a depth to it that I'm really impressed with. But the most important thing is I always think about what do I want to say to people? What's important for me to say? And right now what was important for me to say is the two things that got me through the first nine months of my grief is my friends and the music. And I don't ever mean to diminish that because that, that's what got me through. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't the food, it wasn't my Valium occasionally, it wasn't my doggies, it was really my friends and the music. Across the blue Miami sky mm -hmm. 